Hey, it's Dry Bear. Season one of Dragonflight is closed. So we're now in week zero of season two. It hasn't officially started yet. I figured it'd be a great time to check in on where the classes were in the very last week of season one as we prepare for season two as a good marker to see exactly where they grow after the 10.1 changes. So let's be looking at the final week of the season one season using 10.0.7 as the basic patch, and then we'll look at it again next week when the season two finally kicks off. Also, come join me on my live stream. I'm live every day. If you don't come hang out on my live stream, I'm going to go into every single load of laundry that you make and steal one sock. Now, we'll begin like we always do by looking at past data, but this time around, just to close out season one, on screen, you will see the very first video that I did for season one, Dragonflight for the DPS classes, and this is going to be week one. So this is actually where we had the classes pegged for DPS, the first opening week of Dragonflight Season 1. Again, these are pulled from the Warcraft logs using actual parses. Uh, back then, we, we used 99 percentile for parsing. We actually use 95 now, uh, as we kind of discovered that through process. But this is where everything was. You can see that there were trends already. We saw that enhancement was doing well. Uh, in general, we know that Havoc was doing about just under that top tier. Uh, same thing goes for uh, Windwalker, kind of where they stood throughout the season. Devastation started the season pretty average in Raid, very low in Mythic Plus. Retribution was kind of the same, and Retribution just fell off hard. We saw that Fury had a good start in Heroic Raid, and then over time fell. Uh, and then same thing goes for um, some of the other classes and specs we saw in here. Shadow started low, but got a lot of buffs over the time. So this is kind of where things are. Let's take a look at the final week of Dragonflight Season 1 to see what changed. And bam! On screen are the final numbers for DPS rankings. Season 1, final week, the end of the road here. So some pretty major changes. Uh, we saw in Holy DK pop up about week 7, week 8, sort of take off like crazy. Uh, specifically in Rage, just really doing tons of damage getting better and better in Mythic Plus, but then struggling a lot. Uh, at the start of the season, we saw Arcane Mage at the very top of all setups. In fact, most of uh, the races, as well as the Mythic Plus pushes, included Arcane Mages. Then they fell down super hard. They're still doing okay in Heroic Raid, but not, uh, not so great in the other categories. Frost Mage came up quite a lot in, in Heroic Raid. Again, the reason why I like including Heroic Raid is because, in general... You don't have to obey mechanics in Heroic Raid, and it's also easy to, what I like call, cook the books in Heroic Raid, which means that you can stop healing your tanks and get your, your blood DK to get high healing numbers, or you can have one of your DPS not kill adds and just focus on boss, or you can have all DPS focus on boss and one big cleave DPS, like a Havoc Demon Hunter or something, kill all adds and have crazy DPS numbers. So because you're unrestricted and heroic, it's easy to get those numbers kind of messed around. And you're a lot more free to uh, move about the cabin, I guess you could say. Whereas in Mythic Raid, you have to do the mechanics. Everyone has to participate and your group size is limited, which means you can't do like two healing a 20 man, for example, to get high HPS numbers because you're under healing. There's less healing uh, coming out, less healers, which means there's more healing to be done, which means you can cook the books, you can get the numbers uh, stacked up in your favor. So that's why I like including Heroic Raid because it kind of shows what's possible. It also shows more of a average player base representation of how these classes are performing. And then when actual difficulty comes into play and you have mechanics that need to be done, how does that affect the class going into it? Uh, Devastation Evoker is another one to talk about here as well. They uh, started out about average in the middle of the season. Then as we got to week 12, week 13, as they pushed towards the end, they started doing amazingly well. Some nice big buffs kind of put them in the spotlight, pushed them forward. We saw them being picked up more in Mythic Raids, which was awesome. Very exciting to see the new DPS spec doing that. But as you can see, towards the end of the season, in Heroic Raid and Mythic Plus, their performance started coming down. Mostly in Heroic Raid, Mythic Plus performance for Devasta Devastation hasn't really ever been all that great all season long. Um, part of it's just their reliance on cooldowns. Uh, part of it's just... Yeah, I mean, they're just a little bit slower, and it's harder for them to pick up with the pace of Mythic Plus, uh, but they just have not really been the greatest in Mythic Plus, about average or below average for most of the season. A cool note here is Retribution. Retribution, as we saw before, 
started out about in the middle, maybe slightly above at the very beginning uh, preseason and then start of season one. And then over time, they just fell and fell and fell and fell. And as other classes scaled up, they got their set bonuses active. They got their stat weights proper. Everything worked out and then Retribution just fell behind. They couldn't really keep up. Everything uh, was struggling for them. So in 10.0.7, they got this big rework. Same thing goes for the other uh, two Paladin specs. And we'll talk about that in separate videos for healers and tanks and what that really did for namely Protection Paladin. But Retribution Paladin ended up being brought up quite a lot because of those changes, especially in Mythic Plus, which was super exciting to see because typically they struggled to keep up in AoE situations, in high movement situations with Divine Storm, and it worked out. I would say that they're definitely in there. They're kind of in that mid-level uh, bracket, you know, with Arms Warrior, Elemental Shaman, Unholy DK, in that separation there, Fury Warrior, Frost DK, Beast Mastery Hunter, and it's a good place to be for Retribution. I don't know if Retribution would ever really stack up with like a Fire Mage or a Subtlety Rogue or a Balanced Druid uh, based on what they bring to the table in a Mythic Plus at the highest level. But uh, being in the middle here is huge for Retribution. So let me know what you think if Retribution rework was worth it, if it's something that really valued them over time. So that's super cool. We like to see that. Uh, looking at Shadow Priest, started the season really low. Then they got some major buffs and about halfway through the season, three quarters of the season, Shadow Priest shot way up in all three categories. So all the buffs that they got continuously brought them up. And then towards the end of 10.0.7, we saw them kind of fall back to normal values uh, for Heroic and Mythic Raid. Uh, and then Mythic Plus, it looks like they've still held on to that. In fact, most of the comps they were seeing at the end of Season 1 for Mythic Plus had uh, Rogue, Mage, Druid, or Rogue, Mage, Priest, or Enhancement Shaman, Mage, Rogue. <laughs> There's just a lot of Mage, Rogue in there. Fire Mage, Subtlety, Rogue, so good. Uh, Balance Root, also really good, bringing the uh, Battle Res, which is super useful. A lot of Knockbacks, which is useful for some weeks based on the affixes you're facing. And what's cool here, too, is we actually do see Destruction Warlock climbing up quite a lot. Um, actually, Heroic Ray, we saw Affliction. There, that was the only place they really shined at all, all season long. They did come up a little bit after all the buffs and reworks and changes, and I'm more excited to see going into Season 2, Week 1, where Affliction Warlock sits, specifically in Raid, after all the changes they got in 10.1 and how all that kind of ties itself together. I'm super excited to see what that did for them in general. Uh, we talked about mages, uh, Frost Mage coming up, Fire Mage coming up, Arcane Mage going down, Survival Hunter not at the bottom. They were brought up some, which is super cool to see. Survival did get some nice changes in 10.0.7. Not anything major. I honestly don't know why there weren't more changes for Survival in 10.1. Maybe we're going to see more going forward with balance changes because they have been pretty active this season. But uh, yeah, that's where Survival is. Marksmanship got, got a big hit with a loss of Double Tap Season 1. Still sad about that. And uh, that's kind of where they're at. But they were brought up some with some buffs, uh, some overall blanket buffs. Damage increases to both them and their pet uh, help them more than Beast Mastery and Survival. And they do okay, uh, specific, specifically in Mythic Raid, they're doing uh, great. They're excellent. Although I would like to see Marksmanship and Beast Master Hunter much higher in Mythic Plus when it comes to that. Assassination Rogue, they really were only doing well all season long in Heroic Raid, where they could just sit on a target, get their poisons and all their dots and everything ticking properly and manage that. And they don't have to run around and do mechanics and they let other people do it. And, you know, they were just the parsing gods in Heroic Raid all season. And they were just pretty abysmal in Mythic Raid and Mythic Plus. A little bit higher than they were previously. They were usually in the bottom three, bottom four, but still at the bottom. Kind of sad to see for Assassination. Uh, probably would like to see more Assassination changes going into kind of the first month, maybe week one through week four of season two. Windwalker is about where they've been. No major changes there. Heroic Raid a little lower than what you'd expect, uh, but Mythic Raid and Mythic Plus are about where they are. Typically, Windwalker has their moments in Mythic Plus where they just shine. You know, uh, they have crazy AoE stuns. The Ring of Peace can be exceptional for some, uh, some affixes, although Necrotic is gone now. It's one of the main things that it was like perfect for, for some tanks that were too slow, but that's gone. And we'll see how those affixes uh, affect them uh, going into like, uh, probably like week five, week six, once they get their gear, Windwalkers don't start out out of the gate perfect. They need a lot of stats to make everything work and all their cooldowns to line up properly. But once they get that, it works out great. Havoc, 
They're in the same boat. You just, you can't go wrong with Havoc. Their AOE potential is amazing. They have crazy cleave. Their cooldowns are short. Their damage windows are reliable. They have great mobility. Uh, and then they also have good single target as well. So they're just across the board. They started great in the, in the beginning of the season. They, they were in the middle of the season great. And then at the end of the season, they're great. So Havoc, not, <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. Havoc has been doing amazingly uh, this entire time. Elemental Shaman did come up a little bit after they did some changes to him. I still would like to see more changes to Elemental. I think they're definitely... I One of my favorite iterations of Elemental is actually Dragonflight. I just think it's missing a few changes to really bring it all together. Namely some stat problems and stat weightings uh, with how the class is designed. But I was super encouraged to see some of the changes they've made to them over the last six weeks or so to get Elemental in a good spot. Uh, Enhancement Shaman... If we actually were to take the percentiles here and scale them up to max, you would see Enhancement Shaman scale probably to the top five. And that just tells you that there's a nice skill ceiling for Enhancement Shaman. If you hit all the procs, if you're positioning yourself well and you're managing everything right, they are incredibly powerful uh, overall. So that's where we are for DPS at the end of Season 1. I'm excited to see where they line up in Season 2. Let me know what your predictions are for each spec. Uh, or your favorite spec, or, or things you'd like to see changes going forward. But that is the Season 1 Final Recap DPS Dragonflight. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon, and view Patreon-exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.